Hey everybody, it's been a while since I posted a video and I, the reason is I got this, rented this bulldozer behind me. Um, it's a Cat D6 and I've never driven a bulldozer before. I'm definitely not qualified, but I wanted to make a quick video to show just kind of how I've been learning it and some of the features on it that really make it possible for you know, just a regular homeowner like me to rent one of these things and use it to make a big driveway. And I'm making lots of driveway. So um, I'm doing my brother's build site and I'm doing mine. And together there's about 4,000 feet of driveway. This dozer is coming in handy because it's got some really cool features on it that are um, automatically will do your slope and your grades. Um, and I'm finding that if you're not an experienced dozer operator, uh, those are things you're definitely going to want because it's running a dozer is much more difficult than one would think. And I've driven lots of machines and to get it right, to get it smooth, get your grades real nice, it's very difficult. When you're doing dozer work, you have to think about a lot of things when you're um, using it. So. When you're making a driveway like this, you've got a side to side slope and then you've got your grade of the road, so how steep the hill is. Um, and you need to really be paying attention to all that when you're making a big driveway. Um, I don't see a lot of information on YouTube about this because I, trust me, I looked for a lot of info on how to make a driveway. Usually it's just, you know, somebody with a drone shot doing, a, you know, driving through a field or something and making, a driveway and they're not really explaining what they're doing why they're doing it the right approach to do you cut your ditch first do you you know start in the middle do you push material from the inside of the hill or the upslope side to the outslope or vice versa just all these little things that a rookie like myself would want to know i didn't really find so one one thing i want to start with here with this dozer is this one has a six-way blade on it and it is very, very touchy. Um, and this thing is so big, this is over 50,000 pounds. Any little minor change in that blade position and you will mess up your whole driveway. And you'll start to get what look like, like a roller coaster hills because you're trying to overcompensate when you're driving it. And it's very, very difficult to do if you've never, it's very difficult to make a flat driveway that follows the grade that you're going for and so that's key is this you're not just making a flat thing you're making like a nine percent hill that needs to be flat but then that also has to be sloped in toward a ditch or outwards to let water um, slough off so there's a lot going on and it's much more difficult than one would think to make a really good driveway i want to go and hop into this thing and show you guys how it works. It was very intimidating for me because it's huge. After some time though, I got used to it and I found that the automated controls are a lifesaver for somebody might, like me. And uh, if you're gonna rent one of these things, I would strongly recommend getting one fitted with the slope and grade control. It's a beast just to climb into this thing. So you, you know, you got these steps here that Oh, and then handles. I'm trying to do this while filming. So there we go. It can pretty much drive up a straight up hill. I mean, they come with an operator's manual and I've read a lot of it, but there's just a lot of little things like to have this door lock open, you just have to open it and push it hard. And then there's like releases up here to close it. When you hop into the cab here, the first thing you'll notice is that the seat is at an angle. Um, and I'd never been in a dozer, so I didn't know that. So I thought that was kind of odd and I was trying to figure out, okay, how do you straighten this thing out? But it doesn't straighten out. The reason you're at this angle is because when you get into the cab, I'll show you the point of view from the operator. You're back here and you look out, you're pretty much, all you're doing when you're in a dozer is you're looking at the corners of your blades. And so there's nice visibility to the corners. There's really not very much visibility over the top and you really can't see what's in front of you. So 
that's something to know is that you're pretty much looking right out the side here at your corners the whole time when you're using the dozer. So let's fire this thing up. First thing is just kind of click it to get it started. I usually wait until that beeper goes off. And then she fires up. I had to turn the music off. So this thing is kind of loud right now because the door is open and the engine is out front. But I will say this thing's got very nice AC. It is like an ice box. So Cat has done a great job with this. And let me shut the door here so you can kind of uh, hear better. And to shut the door, you just pull this release up here. And there we are. And you can hear the sound difference. I won't go into full detail on all of these controls because there's a lot of good videos out there that have already done this. But in a dozer, the main thing is your blade is controlled on the right stick over here. And if you have rippers or winches on the back of the dozer, which I do not on this one, they're controlled with this stick here. And then on the left, you have a handle that really all it does is it rotates back and forth like this. And that's what turns the dozer um, but it does not push forward or backwards like in a normal skid steer or excavator or something like that you have a to go forward you just flip the switch to f you could flip this switch to the middle to be a neutral and then you reverse with this so in the in the newer machines here you really just are going forwards and backwards with just your thumb this little wheel here so this sort of is like a gear selector shifts down to different gears as you're um, going so and then your screen tells you right here how fast you're going to go on your forward gears and then that top button is is like a cruise control option which i don't ever use your idle is over here or your throttle um and on a dozer you just set them all the way up uh, while you're pushing um, and the machine kind of does the work for you. There is a thumb switch here that when you slide it one way or another, let me, so when you push it this way or push it this way, it changes the angle of your blade like a snow plow. And then when you pull in and out like this, it tips, tips the blades like this and then forward and or forward and backward raise and lower the blade and then if you push and hold down that's how you do your float um, the blade drops and while you're you're going backwards and here is your parking brake and your hydraulic lock and then there's lots of windshield wipers all over this thing because there are windows everywhere your radio your air conditioning and then work lights and that is about all of the basic controls this is this is the thing I want to talk about, the grade control and slope control. So on the left, you can see the grade, um, which is how steep up and down you're going on the hill. And then on the right, you have the slope, which is, you know, your, the slope of your driveway to let water kind of slough off it. Now, the first thing you want to do when you, if you're new like me to driving a dozer, you want to come in and I'd say turn the stable blade on because that this handle over here is really touchy. Um, and if you're not, if you don't have the muscle memory yet, it's going to be very difficult to have a smooth result in the front. You'll, you'll, your blade will go up and down and you'll be overcompensating. So the best thing is to start out on a flat piece of ground. Like if you have a build site, scraping all the topsoil off, I found that that was the most helpful thing to learn the dozer. So start on a build site and just scrape topsoil off. Don't worry about a driveway because driveways are hard and getting grades are hard. But once you feel comfortable, you're, you'll come into your slope assist and on the left is your grade and on the right is your slope. These settings in the black here are your presets. So when you start going, you're gonna press this yellow button here and the machine will drop to whatever you have punched in here. So if you want a 9% downgrade, um, like you're going on a hill, uh, 
when I press that yellow button, that blade up front is going to take the position for 9% grade. And I'm just going to drive forward and let it do its thing. And then over here is how much slope I want in the driveway side to side. And right now I've been doing some ditching on some of the steeper area. So I'm doing a 10% on the inside and I keep working it down on the inside just so I have a ditch on the uphill side. To set your set points, like let's say I want to do 8% downgrade instead of a nine, I can adjust using these touch buttons here. I get it down to eight. And then over here, if I want to say, okay, you know, I'm ready to go flat. When I move the stick, the blade tips up and tips down. And as I'm tipping, this slope is changing. So if I want kind of to do flat now, because I've got my ditches done, I'll set it kind of uh, to around where I want to be. And when you press this triangle button down here, that will set whatever, it'll put your preset to whatever is in this upper box. So if I want 1.5%, I can just press that and I'll quick set it. And then I can say, well, actually I really want 2% when I get going. And these buttons here reverse your slope. So if I wanted the 2% to go out instead of in, um, are to the right instead of to the left, I just press that. And then same thing here, if I wanted to switch and go uphill instead of downhill, I just press that and it switches it. So it's pretty basic. So one important thing to know that uh, you can punch those numbers in and you can be right on your plan, but you have to consider that you're moving material while you're driving. And you have to consider what the grade is at currently so you can't just say, okay, I'm just gonna punch in 12% and get a 12% grade right away. Um, it'll start digging a 12% hill for you, but you have to think about, is there gonna be an uphill swoop after this? You know, what am I gonna do with all this material I'm cutting? Or maybe when you start, it's not even cutting at all because the grade you're on is steeper than 12%. So you have to get the hang of just reading your existing path um, where it's at now. And you can do that by just parking or stopping, dropping the blade down. If you drop your blade down, let me lift it up here. So right now my blade is, if I were to drive straight, I'd make basically a flat spot. So right, I'm right about flat right now, 0.1%. And then I've got a 4.6% uh, side slope here. And I can adjust that to you know, flat as well. But this can give you a good idea if you're gonna go into a, a new spot and you're trying to figure out, okay, where is it at currently? You wanna make sure you've got kind of an even surface for your tracks and everything. And then you just push your blade down and you, you sort of figure out, okay, what angle you're resting at right now. Right now I'm resting at about 11.8% grade. And there's a slight well, I'd say there's probably more of a slight outslope here if I actually get the blade to touch on both sides. So yeah, it's about it's about even where I'm at. I'm sort of in a flat pad, but I'm pointing downhill. So that's kind of how you get where you're at. So if I need to take this to 12%, um, uh, make it less steep, I'm gonna have to bring in more dirt and smooth this area out. So this video is really for uh, beginners with bulldozers because that's what I am I'm not gonna be able to give you any advice um, on you know my years of experience or anything but I just wanted to make this video to show that a regular Joe can rent a dozer assuming it's the right kind um, and take it you know take power into their hands and make their own driveway um, the key though is to use the computer uh, because if you watch a lot of the bulldozer videos you'll see the guy's right hand just constantly moving all the time like and it's very very like a lot it requires lots of muscle memory that's earned over hundreds if not thousands of hours of just doing this to keep that blade especially with the six-way blade here um so if you have a dozer that can automatically do this for you uh you really just have to focus on where you're at on your driveway and look at your plan and check your slopes and your grades and 
what, think about where you want material to go and how you want to build the road up and how much you want to cut and things like that. So I'm just gonna kind of go through and show um, an area that I haven't done yet. And now this is an existing driveway that was an old farm road and it had a cut in it. So I'm just kind of cleaning it up. We've already been through, grubbed out a lot of the uh, buckthorn and smaller trees and stuff along the way. Um, so what I do is I'm making a cut sort of into the hillside here and bring it pushing material across. And I kind of want to get rid of the topsoil and organic matter first. So I'll kind of do a cut and just kind of push it off to the side and let it go over the edge. And then I'll come back through and I'll make a deeper cut for my inside ditch because I'm going to do an inside ditch on this driveway. And then my plan is to slope the drive towards the ditch and fill my ditch with riprap so none of it goes over the side it all comes back to the ditch now I think the key to this is you have to have like riprap or lots of culverts that go through so you slow that water down because the longer water has to run the faster it goes and the more it eats out so um, that's what I'm gonna be doing so right around here we're about 11% is what we want so I'm gonna go Stable blade just kind of is a good thing for beginners. If you don't have that muscle control, it'll slow it down so it's not so jerky on you. I'm gonna go to my slope assist, and I know I want about an 11% downgrade, so right now I'm at 8.1. And I can kind of do this with my joystick here, and then set it. I'll just start with 11 here, and then on my initial cut, I don't really want to do much of an angle, so I'm going to sort of flatten this out to about zero, my, my slope, side to side. So I'll set that, we'll just set this at zero. And then my six way, I'm gonna angle the blade like snowplow, push the material from the side slope across. So I'll pick up my blade here and I'll just kind of angle it like this. All right, and then, for this pass, since I'm not doing a deep cut, I can go a little faster. But again, if you're just starting out, just go really slow. And I'll turn my parking brake off. Start going. Give it my revs. And I'll press my button and you'll see the greens are doing the work for me. So I'm just gonna kind of drive so that my blade is on the hillside here on this cut try to pull some of that material out for me because it's silted in over the years so I need to bring this out and this d6 can push a lot of dirt it's really flowing over top here and you'll see unlike the pros who are doing this by hand, I don't even have to touch this left joist or this right joystick here. I just have to keep my hand on the left joystick to steer. And I just leave it alone and the computer's doing all the work. It's keeping me at 10.9 down slope and it's giving me a 0% dead flat side to side. And this is doing a pretty good job of pulling that material out and kicking it over out the side here. I just kind of, I leave it flat, that initial pass, just to kick material over. And then my next pass, I'm going to, I'll do more of a ditch. And I just kind of go down, just cruise down. As long as I'm not digging in, I'll just keep going. And I see a giant boulder over there. It just came off of this. As soon as I start digging in, like right here, where it flattens out, I'm going to pull up on the stick. It's gonna go down, see it went to 2.1%. So that's where I'm gonna stop. You just wanna make sure all the material comes off your blade. And now we go back. With this model, there is a decelerator pedal, but you don't really need to use it. Um, it, it automatically does your uh, deceleration for you when it shifts. The other thing, if you're new like me to dozing, is you spend a lot of time going backwards. Forwards and back, forwards and back. I think the key is you don't get too aggressive. Even with a big machine like this, you don't need to be aggressive. You can just take little, little cuts, work with your computer, 
and make sure you're getting close to your final grade. I'm not an expert at this. I have just been in this thing for about 15 hours now and learning this computer and I've done one driveway already. So kind of got, got the bugs out a little bit. So the big difference with this driveway is it's going up a steep slope and around a corner. And then we're building a big switch back at the top. Um, I'm just waiting on my permit for that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to keep my same slope, but I'm going to uh, adjust my cut. I'm gonna do a 10% cut. It's about right for this um, existing road here. I'm just gonna back up here. And I'm just gonna stay along the wall I made and start making a ditch. So, cause it, the further you go into the wall, the steeper it gets, and then the more erosion issues you have. So you kind of want to have a gradual slope on your uphill side, not a big cliff. And luckily I've got enough space to work with. I can knock down a little bit over and then take my ditch cut. So I'm just going to show how that works now. So I'm going to slow down on my ditch cut um, because it requires a little bit more power here from the machine. Got lots of boulders here. I might be a little too aggressive on my cut, so I'm just manually bringing it up so I'm not digging too deep here. Whenever you add more slope, you take a really big cut um, for the same grade. I'm gonna back up a little bit here. I'm gonna adjust this. Go a little less aggressive on this pass. There's lots of stone, or, uh, roots and boulders in my way. Okay, so get it going. All right, it seems to be a little better. 9.5 and 8 here. So this machine, when you're in a lower gear, it doesn't use full revs unless you need it. So you may hear it speeding up and slowing down and it really only does that when you're going real slow. Staying along my wall, and everything's just pitching over to the right. I've had a lot of people tell me, a lot of the guys that are around here building things and doing stuff, contractors who've run dozers before, say that this is cheating. But I'll take it. Who has the ability to get thousands of hours in a bulldozer to learn seat time? Um, so this is this is really nice because you get a nice finish. It may not be exactly like a professional, but it's gonna be a lot better than what you're gonna do manually as a beginner. I just care most about getting the grade right with my driveway plan and having a nice road with a good base. So another thing you can do here is you can, there's a trigger, you pull this, you press these buttons, I can increase my slope by, you know, a tenth at a time when I do that, when I pull that trigger. And the same as if I pull the trigger and I uh, press, um, I think, and I do these other buttons, it can raise and lower um, at certain increments. So it gives you like fine control. So right there, I've already been through the, that part with um, a ditch that was steeper or sorry a slope that was steeper than what I had so I went back to doing my steep slope there so now I'm kind of just I'm going to carry some material down the hill here 
because I got some spots I want to fill in. So with the six way, what's nice is you can sort of steer, steer the blazer with the blade, but also steer your material and push it down a lot farther than you can without a six way. Running a dozer is, I would call it fairly therapeutic, especially if you're going slow like I am. I just creeping around like, you know, definitely a beginner here. But at this speed, I feel comfortable with what I'm doing and it's easier on the dozer. And the main thing is it's more comfortable for me. Still cutting ditch here, so I'm just gonna keep going. We are gonna come back through with the excavator, clean up the ditch walls a little bit, fill them in. I, like I said, you don't really want a real steep slope, so we're gonna smooth it out. Might have to put some erosion blanket on certain areas and things like that where it's a little too high of a wall or too steep. And then we'll be filling it up with all the big. Uh, breaker rock we, we find when we make this cut up here so that'll act as our rip wrap so I've pretty well stopped cutting ditch so I'm just gonna slightly raise up here actually I'm gonna go back and do that because I think I left a little bit too much of a pile still dropping material so I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna feather it up here so I slowly release that pile. Okay. That was a long way down that we just went. So now I've got a lot of material I can use when I do my next cut here. I made it back up to the top. And for my next cut, what I'm gonna do is a 2% slope. Cause I want this to be a 2% slope. So it's a very low angle. If you get too high of a slope, the water will run too fast and you'll lose a lot of the material on your road. So I'm going to do a 2% slope inward. So let me kind of just get that roughly there. And I set and then I can find adjust. Okay, so I got my 2% and then I know this is about a 9.5 through most of this. Um, right here where I'm at, it's for sure um, going to get a little steeper. So I got to kind of ease back in. So at the end of my existing driveway where I'm cleaning up before we get to the new cut um, it's going to be about a nine percent grade and I know that from my plan and my, my driveway plan all right so all we do is um, we're set with our downgrade of nine five and then uh, we got our slope and now I'm going to come and I'm going to keep pushing the, the dirt away from the hillside here but my slope's going to be angled in. So I'm still going to have an angle going in, but I'm moving material away from the ditch. I don't want to fill the ditch back up again. So here we go. All right. I hope this 9.5 is right. Get a little bit more angle so I don't fill my ditch up. What I'm basically doing here is I'm bringing the road bed down a little bit and widening it out on the downhill side. And I'm also rolling over material. A lot of that organic material gets rolled over and, and pushed off to the side because we don't want it underneath the road bed. Now, one thing I really love about having the automatic thing here is you can see it's just kind of like on cruise control. You just really have to steer this thing and if you do this manually it requires a lot of constant adjustment and the other thing that you'll get so you talk people talk about you know you feel it in your butt um, when you're driving like knowing how to use the stick but one thing that uh, you, you don't really feel or perceive without a lot of time as well is how like what your grade actually is that you're going on um, and what your slope is. And every time you move that stick, you're changing it. And depending upon how sensitive the machine is, you could be making huge changes to your grade without you even knowing it. 
All right, so I'm gonna back up here. I thought I lost my pile, but I didn't. I had a little bit left. So I'm gonna back up so I don't have a speed bump. I'm just gonna continue, press the button, let go, and then it will come back through and take that pile out. I got my grade about right on this first try. I knew it was about 9% this whole way. So as soon as I lose all my material, which I have, I'm gonna back up and then I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment here. So um, let me get back a little further. I like the grade I have down there. It kind of flattens out, but right here there's a spot that it's going over 9% downslope. So I need to kind of fill it in and smooth it out. So I need to start back a little bit. Now change to like a, a 10.5. I mean, we could go up one. Might be good to go up two. But I'm just gonna go with a, a, a 10.5 from right here. I'm gonna back up. And now, instead of having a down and up, I, I should be able to do a steeper down start earlier and then connect with my flatter part there so um here we go so i'm starting to dig down a bit so what i'm gonna what i do one actually once i meet back up here i'm almost lost my material and i'm starting to dig down in again this is about where oh, i'm gonna let myself get a cut going Cutting on one side, not the other. Okay, I lost, lost all my material here. So this is where, with your naked eye, it looks, it looks like it's uh, not as steep as it actually is. I'm at 10.5 there, and I'm and I'm still not able to match the grade. So it's that means it's steeper. Um, so I need to go a little steeper. So I'm going to back up and shoot now 11.5. I'll start back a little further and I'll shoot about an 11.5. And that hopefully will get me to where I need to be when I get down there. These things, when you press the brake, they stop up to 11.5. It's doing a little better. And again, we're just doing light cuts to try to shape this driveway got good material across it that I took from my ditch pass. So now it's starting to flatten out because I'm starting to dig. So I'm going to pop it up here. So all you got to do is you just pull up and it'll readjust. Okay, it's starting to flatten out. I'm making a cut and I'm at eight right now. Need to bring it up. So this eventually gets to a 4%. So I want to get it back up to a 4% here. I'm basically going from a 11 and a half to a 4% grade. And I'm just trying to get the material to, or to have a nice smooth grade all the way down. So this is where it gets, turns to 4%. And now I'm on a six and it's starting to dig in a little bit. So I'm gonna just feather it up to a five. And then I'm gonna get to my four. I don't too steep. I, I like it to be about a four here. And if I lose all my material, that's okay. That means I've met back up with my road and I'll have a nice, straight, smooth um, junction. Again, this is just all about small movements. We're, this isn't like when you're doing a driveway, it's not really about hogging dirt out and moving it across the site or anything like that. It's just about making the cut for your road bed very precise. Because once this is done, we're gonna put geomat down. Okay, now I've lost my material. We're gonna put geomat down and then we bring in six inches of breaker rock on top of the geomat. So nice thing about grading it nice with the dozer is you just have to spread rock then you don't actually have to grade your breaker so now this is my third pass this is might be my final pass with the dozer I'm going to take a little steeper cut initially and then back off I'll probably go to a, a 12 
12.5. My um, town around here only allows you to go up to 12.9, um, or like 13%, I think, grade. So I'm gonna do a 12.5 just to kind of get started here, because I know I'm gonna be at uh, right under 13% for the switchback. So I'm gonna start it steep. I'm gonna get some material. I'm gonna start on the outside. And now that I've got a lot of breaker that's been rolled over, I can go on the outside and sort of push, you know, steer it. So I bring some material back um, and then smooth and level it out. I'm gonna keep it at 2% um, on my, my side slope here. So yeah, this should uh, be my final pass. I should have my full width road um, and I'll be done and ready for Geomat. Now, what's gonna happen for me is I'm going to do um, have electric run up to the site. We were gonna go off grid, but we decided not to, given a lot of reasons, and I'll post um, a video on that separately, but the power company buries all of the line around here. Um, so they bring a machine that has a knife behind it, and they just knife in the wire but they like to go up your driveway so what you got to do is you got to rough it in for them they knife in right through the middle and then you can put your geomat down and your breaker rock and build over top of it um, and you have to also pass things under your culverts as well uh, so yeah so let's finish this thing up <laughs> back up here it's too steep of a cut and there's a big rock right here <laughs> so I'm having trouble getting over this big rock so I'm gonna start back a little further see if I can't get a better uh, angle now now since I'm starting back farther I'm gonna have to go back down to a shallower angle here so I'll do 11.5 and that way I don't get in too steep down here. Let's see if I can get this rock covered up here. Sort of what's happening, um, one, one thing about this machine with the autopilot stuff is the uh, if you hit a rock or get stuck on a rock, it, it can struggle with that because it's trying to dig and it can't. Um, and so then it can overcompensate and dig a hole. So I'm just going to uh, come through here and bring some dirt over. I'm going, I pushed a lot over by the ditch here, so I'm going to bring this back out of the ditch. We started back a little further. Running about 10%, looking pretty good right here. I know it's going to get a little steeper as I go down here, but I'm just going to let it go at 10 because I got a lot of material in front of my blade. I'm okay flattening this out a bit if I can. Got all my material gone. We're gonna back up here. It's actually looking pretty good. So I've got a little hump here I built up. I want to get rid of that. So I'm punching in my 10%. Now I'm gonna carry a bunch of material down the hill again until it runs out. I think the key is if you're doing, if you're trying to go back and forth over the same spot and pull material from the sides and flatten it out and use the same settings each time, you got to make sure you start in the exact same spot each time when you press that button. So that's the key is knowing where you press the button the last time. I was about right here. I'm gonna take this ball of dirt that I have on the right. And I'm gonna kind of push it off. I might make a pullout spot. 
because this is a long drive. I need a couple pullouts in case there's two cars coming at each other. The trick is to make sure the slope's always the same. That way the road's always shaped so it's going in towards the ditch. Unless you want it to go the other way, but just make sure it goes the same direction at all times. So I had a little bit of junk in my ditch, so I just decided to do another pass here and pull that junk out. It's actually not junk, it's a good road bed. Still pushing it. So I'm gonna keep going. Alright. And my ditch will get bigger when I add the breaker in here. So because I'll have breaker and then I'll have finished gravel and then I'll have chip seal on top of that. So it's gonna build up the road a little bit. And then my ditch, I can fill it with uh, rip wrap. All right, so let's come out here and take a look at what we did. So up here is where our new driveway is starting. So we're waiting to do our cut here because we have to do a big switch back um, on our plan. So we've, we're gonna start grubbing trees out and getting things set up. We're approved for our driveway. We just gotta get our erosion control stuff for that cut approved. But let's go back here and look at the road. So, yeah, here it is. Not bad for an amateur. And again, these ditches, we'll, we're gonna clean up with the excavator as we come through here. And I also have um, a six-way blade for my skid steer that I'm gonna work on the edges. Uh, this dozer's just really huge for to do the stuff on the sides especially when you have all these trees and we're trying to save these trees and you know make make everything look look nice and like we still have forest but yeah i'm just walking down here and this is kind of uh, clumpy right now because it did it did rain yesterday so this isn't the driest stuff so it's not spreading quite as nice as i would like um, but it's it's good enough because again, we're just trying to get the smooth for our uh, Road bed and then we'll be putting our Geo mat on it. So I won't go all the way down the driveway, but you can kind of see it's looking really good We get some nice big boulders popping up out of here and this one Here's my hand for scale, but this one broke in half and there she is. So we're getting a driveway with the 12 foot road bed and I've got four foot on each side for ditches. So this machine does it pretty quickly as you can see.